Hey everyone, welcome to Cyber Platter. This is Navya. This is a series on behavioral cybersecurity interview question and answers. This is part four. The other videos, the link will be in the description box. So let's get started. Question, tell me about a time you had to explain a complex security concept to a non-technical audience. For this, you can pick up any common security control that you are familiar with, like for example, MFA, phishing, encryption, patching or backups. Then you can use a simple analogy, like for example, house keys, lock door, seat belts, alarms to explain this concept. Then at the end, you show the business impact, like for example, compliance, how you reduce risk or how the adoption can be smoother. Let's look at an example situation. So you can say that in your previous role, you had to brief your finance team on why multi-factor authentication, that is MFA, was critical for protecting sensitive data. The finance team was frustrated with the extra step and it was seen as a productivity blocker. My task was to explain them, understand the risk without overwhelming them with technical jargon. So I compared passwords to house keys, explaining that if someone copies your house key, they can walk right in. But with MFA, that is multi-factor authentication, it is like having both a key and a security code for the alarm system. So this analogy, right, it makes the concept more relatable. I, you can also add that you then walk them through a recent case study of a phishing attack at another company that resulted in financial fraud. So after explaining the challenge and your task, then you talk about the result. For example, as a result, the team not only accepted MFA, but became strong advocates of it across the department. The rollout went smoothly and compliance rates improved from 70% to nearly 100% in a matter of weeks. Now let's look at another security concept, how you could explain to a non-technical audience. So you can start with the same concept that at your previous job, our leadership team asked why patching had to be prioritized so urgently. So they viewed patching as routine IT work that could be delayed. My task was to explain the risks in a way that highlighted the business impact. So instead of diving into CV scores or exploit chains, I compared unpatched systems to a car recall. If a defect is found in your car, you wouldn't keep driving it knowing the brakes might fail. Similarly, leaving critical vulnerabilities unpatched leaves the organization exposed to attackers. I also explained them a real-world example of a ransomware attack that spread through an unpatched server at another company in our industry. As a result of this, the leadership approved an accelerated patch cycle and we reduced our average time to patch by over 40%. And this significantly lowered our exposure to zero-day threats. This is how you answer this question. Let's move on to the next one. Describe a time when you had to prioritize multiple security tasks or projects. How did you decide what to focus on? So you need to frame your question around risk, resources and results. Risk is which threat or project had the biggest potential business impact. Resources, what constraints did you consider like time, staff or budget? Then results, what outcome showed your prioritization was effective? Let's look at an example situation. In a previous role, I was managing several competing security priorities at once. A critical patch rollout, a phishing awareness campaign and implementing a new SIM feature. All of these were important, but resources were limited. My first step was to assess business impact and risk. That is, I did risk-based prioritization. The patch addressed a zero-day vulnerability with known exploits in the wild, so that became the top priority. I coordinated with IT to push emergency patches within 48 hours. 
Next, I scheduled the fishing campaign to align with our quarterly training window so it wouldn't disrupt operations. Finally, I planned the SIM enhancement as a phased project starting with high value log sources. As a result, we quickly mitigated the highest risk vulnerability, maintained our security awareness schedule without any delays and successfully rolled out the SIM upgrade the following month. This structured risk-based prioritization ensured we protected the business without overwhelming teams or missing deadlines. Next question. Can you give an example of a security policy or procedure you help develop or improve? For this, you can pick up a policy area that's widely relatable like for example, incident response, password or MFA policy, data handling or patching SLAs. So by that, even if the interviewer is not deeply technical, they'll immediately see the value in it. Let's look at an example situation. At a previous role, I noticed our incident response procedure did not clearly define roles during after our security events. This led to confusion and delays during a phishing related incident. I took the initiative to review the policy, benchmarked it against NIST guidance and worked with IT, legal and HR to define clear escalation paths and responsibilities. So there is a video that I've already uploaded that explains the NIST incident handling process in depth. I'll link it in the description box. Please refer to it if you would like more details about incident handling process. Continuing with the answer, so you talk about how you benchmarked it against NIST guidance and how you worked with IT legal and HR. And then you can also say that you added a communication protocol, including who to notify and how to notify. This was to ensure the right people were looped in quickly. Once finalized, I held a tabletop exercise with the team to test the revised procedure. And this simulation showed response times improved significantly with clearer accountability across departments. As a result, the updated policy reduced our incident response time by about 30% and gave leadership great confidence in our ability to handle real threats. Next question, have you ever faced an ethical dilemma in your cybersecurity work? How did you handle it? So you can pick up an example where you protected data, privacy or fairness rather than exposing someone. Show that you followed policy and proper channels rather than making a unilateral decision. And end the answer with a positive outcome like for example policy improved, lesson learned or trust maintained. So let's look at an example situation. You can start by saying yes, that in your previous role, you did encounter an ethical dilemma when you discovered that a senior employee was misusing administrative privileges to access confidential files outside their job scope. This was not a clear cut technical incident, but it raised serious privacy and policy concerns. My task here was to address this situation without bias or breaching confidentiality. I documented all the evidence carefully, verified logs to ensure there are no false positives. Then rather than confronting the individual directly, I escalated th through the proper chain that is through our CISO and HR. This ensured the investigation was handled professionally and was in line with company policy. Finally, the HR and legal addressed the issue appropriately and our team used the case to reinforce our access control policy. By handling it this way, I upheld privacy, stayed within compliance requirements and protected both the organization and the integrity of the investigation. Next question. Describe a time when you made a mistake in your cybersecurity work. How did you handle it and what did you learn? 
here the interviewer would want to look at your accountability and learning mindset so be honest explain the mistake without blaming others the steps you took to fix it and the changes you made to avoid repeating it so you can say earlier in my career i was responsible for updating firewall rules during a scheduled change window the task was to restrict access on a specific port to only a few trusted ip ranges while implementing the rule i accidentally applied it too broadly which blocked traffic for an entire internal subnet this caused a temporary service disruption for one of our business units and users could not access key applications for about 20 minutes as soon as monitoring alerts indicated connectivity issues i quickly reviewed the logs identified the con- misconfiguration and rolled back the changes to restore service I immediately informed my manager and the impacted team about what had happened and took full responsibility for the error. After the incident was resolved, I documented the root cause and walked the team through the sequence of events during our postmortem. I proposed adding an additional safeguard to our change management process, a mandatory peer review of firewall rule changes before deployment along with testing in a staging environment where possible. This practice was adopted and it significantly reduced the risk of similar mistakes in the future. So this experience taught me two key lessons first the importance of not rushing security changes even during tight change windows and second the value of process improvements that build resilience into operations this turned what could have just been a negative event into a positive shift in how our team approached change control and collaboration Next question have you ever had to enforce security policies that were unpopular and how did you gain compliance to answer this you can say yes in a previous role i was responsible for enforcing a new password policy that required longer pass phrases and regular rotations Initially many employees were frustrated saying the new rules slowed down their work and were too complex to remember to gain compliance i first acknowledged their concerns and explained why the change was necessary i used real world examples of breaches caused by weak passwords then instead of just enforcing the policy i provided solutions We rolled out a corporate password manager, offered quick training sessions on creating strong but memorable passphrases, and gave teams a grace period with reminders before strict enforcement began. As a result, adoption was better. Within a month, compliance was above ninety percent. help desk tickets for password resets dropped significantly that was because of the password manager and employees actually felt more confident about their account security this experience reinforced for me that the key to enforcing security policies is not just rules but it is communication education and providing tools that make compliance easier for this question you can take other relatable examples as well like for example enforcing mfa adoption restricting admin rights on uh, endpoints or blocking risky applications or sites and that's it for today guys thank you so much for watching if you like today's video please don't forget to like subscribe and share our videos that helps us a lot i will see you again in another video with more questions on cyber security thank you bye bye